Cruise ships are supposed to be about paradise, relaxation, and luxury. But many don't know the dark issues going on aboard. Since 2000, over 300 people have gone missing on cruise ships. And these are just three of those disappearances. Annette Meisner won a carnival cruise in 2004. The cruise ship was headed to the Mexican Rivera, and Annette went with her parents and her daughter. On the night of her disappearance, she sang karaoke with her daughter, then hit the casino. Annette was last seen at 9.15 p.m. when the ship was 30 miles off the coast of Mexico. The ship was bound for Long Beach, California. When Annette didn't show up for bingo with her parents as planned, they began to worry. The search for Annette began at 10 p.m. There was no sign of her aboard the entire ship. Shortly thereafter, searchers found her purse near a three-foot railing on one of the lower decks. Annette's family said she would have avoided this deck because it was for smokers only. The fact that her purse was found near the edge led many to believe that she fell or was pushed overboard. An extensive search by the Coast Guard and Navy did not find any trace of Annette. Upon further investigation, detectives saw a nearby security camera was covered. And this is a theme on these cruise ships. Many times, either most cameras don't work or they've been covered or destroyed. Annette's family say she wouldn't have harmed herself. Sadly, in July 2005, Annette was declared legally dead. She had a son and a daughter and adopted two additional children shortly before her disappearance. She had a bachelor's degree, and her and her husband ran a business together. Annette's case remains unsolved. Her family believes foul play was definitely involved. In 2005, her husband sued Carnival Cruise Lines for over $15,000 in damages. Lindsay O'Brien was just 15 years old when she went missing on a Carnival cruise ship. Lindsay was from Ireland. She was on the Carnival cruise ship with her parents and siblings. The night of Lindsay's disappearance, passengers reported they could hear kids partying in the cabin. A passenger claimed that Lindsay was extremely drunk. They and other passengers had called security many times because of the noise. Around 10.30 p.m., some children in the O'Brien party saw Lindsay at the bar being served drinks. She was in the bar using her ship charge card that was clearly marked as a children's card. The card had showed that she had 12 alcoholic drinks. This would severely impact an adult, let alone a 15-year-old. A middle-aged bartender was engaging in conversation with Lindsay. He gave her and her friend multiple drinks on the house, and he also gave them cigarettes. When Lindsay's parents found her, they immediately contacted the bartender's supervisor and complained that he was serving underage children drinks. Shortly thereafter, Lindsay's parents gave her water and food and took her to her room. They said goodnight, and they went into their room next door. Just a few minutes later, Lindsay's father heard his other daughter shouting that Lindsay had fell overboard. Lindsay's father ran into her room, and to his disbelief, Lindsay was not there. He looked out on the balcony and could see a chair on its side and vomit on the handrail. Witnesses said they saw Lindsay had hit her head on a lifeboat as she plunged over 70 feet down into the dark sea. The ship took an hour to turn around. Search efforts were made, however, to this day, her body has never been found, and no one knows why she went overboard. Angelo Faliva was a 31-year-old man from Italy. He worked as a chef at Sabatini's restaurant on Princess Cruise Lines. On November 23rd, the ship left Florida and had many destinations along the way to their final destination, Los Angeles. On November 25th, Angelo was working at Sabatini's, 
He was seen by his co-workers getting on an elevator that went to areas only accessible to staff. Angelo did not come back, even though his shift didn't end for a couple more hours. His co-workers noticed he wasn't back, and they had told his boss that he was gone. Nothing was done about Angelo's disappearance until the next morning. Princess Cruz's claimed to not have any surveillance of Angelo. Princess Cruz also deleted the record of passengers who ate at Sabatini's the night Angelo disappeared. Princess headquarters are in California, however they reportedly operate out of Bermuda, allegedly to avoid the U.S.'s safety regulations and taxes. This gave Bermuda full jurisdiction over Angelo's case. According to Angelo's family, the investigation has been lousy. Investigators did not arrive on the ship until 10 days after Angelo disappeared. In January 2010, investigators told Angelo's family that they had not yet looked at his phone or his computer records. They also only spoke to one of Angelo's co-workers. This co-worker shared crew quarters with Angelo and said that Angelo never came back that night. Angelo's family was able to get his computer professionally analyzed. They discovered that the computer had been used several days after his disappearance. Documents were printed, files were downloaded, and emails were deleted. It's still unknown who did this. Angelo's family began receiving frightening phone calls saying Angelo witnessed illegal activities and was gotten rid of by other workers on the ship. Angelo's sister is still in contact with authorities and still seeking answers. Angelo remains missing to this day. Thank you for watching, my friends. Stay safe out there and please subscribe.